Hi, my name is Vanessa Fabre, and I'm here at the Be All Conference, the Midwest's largest transgender conference here in Chicago this year. And I have the privilege of speaking with Mara Kiesling, the Executive Director of the National Center for Transgender Equality. Thank you, Mara, for being with us today. Oh, thanks for having me, Vanessa. So we want to talk right away about you know the very exciting issues going on at the federal level that it, that affect transgender persons all across this country. Could you give us kind of an overview of the Employment non Discrimination Act and what that actually is and what potential it has to impact the lives of transgender people and then what is going on politically right now in Washington. Well, absolutely. Well, uh, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, or ENDA, is, is a really very simple bill. It would just outlaw job discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity. So it would become illegal to hire, fire, or not promote um, people because they were lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. Uh, it would it would apply to all transgender people. Uh, it um, it's it's almost that simple. There are a couple exclusions to it that that I think people should know about. It doesn't apply to the military, so it wouldn't repeal "Don't Ask, Don't Tell." But hopefully soon that won't be an issue anyway. There's a fairly broad religious exemption, which means that religious based entities would still be allowed to discriminate. Mm -hmm. Although more and more that's not that's uh, that's um, not even okay with with them. So so many religious institutions are now fine with LGBT people. Uh, it, it applies to businesses uh, like all civil rights laws in the United States, uh, federal civil rights laws. It applies to um, employers of 15 or more employees. It uh, is the, um, the the result of decades and decades of work, uh, starting in the mid 70s with what at the time was called the Gay Civil Rights Bill, which was more than just employment. It was also about housing discrimination and public accommodations discrimination, credit discrimination, and education. Um, now, ENDA is just uh, employment discrimination, but interestingly, and I don't know if a lot of uh, transgender people or, or gay people know this, but most um, th those other things, housing discrimination, credit discrimination, there are bills for those in Congress right now, too, that have been introduced. Um, this has been a, a really big year for that kind of introduction. And, and over the next few years, we're going to see all of those bills flourish and bloom and pass. Mm -hmm. So ENDA is something we've heard about for a while. Um, what do you think has been the largest influence on how this legislation has um, either been waiting in the wings um, or why now we seem to feel that this is a good time for it to pass? If you could just <clears throat> share a little bit of the history and the timing. The single biggest thing we can do to get the Senate to act is to pass it in the House and yeah. make them understand that they're now the ones yeah. holding it up. Right now, everybody's yeah. holding it up. Um, so since yeah. we're in Chicago right now for the conference, um, could you tell us what you know about the Illinois congressional delegation and what role they are playing in pushing this forward? And maybe what people could do here locally to maybe put a little pressure on certain representatives? Absolutely. Um, you know, the Illinois delegation is, is really pretty good on ENDA. You know, there are, there are two Republican members of the delegation who are co-sponsors of ENDA, and that's Judy Bigger and Mark Kirk. They're, they're both very strong supporters of civil rights in general, LGBT people in general, and, um, and ENDA in particular. But a lot of the Democrats also are very, very, very supportive. Um, I, and I, you know, I feel bad about calling out the two Republicans for specific um, honor there, but you know, a lot of the, um, I, I mean, I could just name you uh, just a bunch of the Democrats who are just spectacular. Mm -hmm. I think um, what folks in the area can do is visit their member of Congress. I know that doesn't always seem sexy, mm -hmm. but whether your member of Congress is very supportive mm -hmm. or very unsupportive or in the middle, mm -hmm. they need to hear from their constituents about this. Mm -hmm. Even if they're an opponent of the bill, if they hear from enough of their constituents, they're going to be less of an opponent. Mm -hmm. And if they're sitting on the fence and they hear from enough of their constituents, mm -hmm. they can come our way. Yeah. And we've seen it happen over and over again with members of Congress. Mm -hmm. At our lobby day, um, an intern in our office went to visit his member of Congress, um, and who was a very conservative member of Congress. And that person has signed on and uh, you know has let our lead sponsors know that he will vote yes on the bill. That's a great lesson. That's, Absolutely. That's, yeah, good lesson to learn. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the National Center for Transgender Equality, okay. um, whom you're representing today. Mm -hmm. um, and you're presenting at this conference? I am. 
Well, um, the National Center for Transgender Equality, or NCTE, is a social justice organization um, that, that works to end disrespect, discrimination, and violence against transgender people. Our particular focus is around federal policy and overall society education, uh, which, by the way, are not mutually exclusive, as you know. Um, when you do one, it impacts the other, and vice versa. But um, what we're, I guess, most known for is our federal policy work. Um, we are a very, very strong voice for transgender people in Washington, D.C. Um, note that I said a strong voice for transgender mm -hmm. people in Washington, D.C. We are not, nor do we want to be, the voice for transgender people in Washington, D.C. There are a lot of great trans folks, whether they work for other LGBT organizations, um, whether there are other places in the country who definitely make their voices here in Washington, heard in Washington. And there are a lot of allies who also are doing great, great trans work around federal policy. But we're a really key component to that. Um, we work as hard as we can to provide as much uh, assistance and motivation for everybody to do great trans work. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're just working, working like crazy. There's mm -hmm. six of us now. Mm -hmm. We have six staff people. Mm -hmm. um, it's really a remarkable staff of incredibly smart, hardworking, um, efficient people. We're a very lean organization. We don't have a lot of bells and whistles. Um, we don't spend a lot of time throwing parties and slapping ourselves on the back. Sometimes you have to do that. We probably don't do it enough, honestly. Some organizations obviously do it too much, and um, we tend to not do it quite enough. So it sounds like one of your goals is to be a leader, not the leader, but a leader. So maybe you could share some of the challenges or lessons learned in working with other organizations and allies um, to build a stronger overall coalition. We come at this from a philosophy of, of mutual responsibility, in a way. We absolutely do insist that there are certain allies who have a responsibility to be our allies, and we hold them to that. But we also believe we have responsibility to be their allies. So if, so it for instance, both ways. it absolutely has to go both mm -hmm. ways, and, and sometimes it's a lot easier to ask for help than to give help. But if, for instance, we want labor to support um, ENDA, and, and a lot of labor has been spectacularly supportive of ENDA and has really helped move it forward, uh, we, we have to, you know, we have to understand that their fight is our fight too. And if we want women's organiza you know, organizations to work on women's issues, and again, most of them have been fabulous on trans issues, we have to understand that we have a social justice obligation to do their work as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think that's the basis for um, coalitions. Now, all of us, when we're in coalitions, we tend to focus on our own stuff. And I think it's very healthy when we get reminded that we need to do a little better on other people's stuff. And we certainly think it's healthy when we remind people they need to do a little bit better on our mm -hmm. trans stuff. Um, what can kind of your average person do who's watching this to help support the work you're doing? Well, there is so much. I, I'm a big believer that you can't be amazing unless you're amazed. And I, you have to find the part of it that's, that's passionate for you. So if, if you believe the most important thing to be working on is, you know, making sure the Cook County jails treat transgender prisoners right, mm -hmm. th that's what you should be working on. If you think um, providing services for transgender seniors is the most important thing, get into that. But if you also think that, you know, animal rights is the most important thing, mm -hmm. and if you can bring being trans to animal rights, so that the animal rights people see that there's a trans person who's responsible and doing great things. That's an amazing, amazing help too. But specific to our work, there, there's so much to do. You know, some people, um, you know, we always talk about time, talent, and treasure. You know, those are the things people generally think they can bring to that. There is more to it than that. There's also the stuff you can do on your own that doesn't involve NCT that makes mm -hmm. our work a lot better. Mm -hmm. So if I go into uh, a senator's office and the senator says, hey, do you know so-and-so, you know, this trans person? And I'm like, no, I, I really don't. And they're like, oh, well, I met with him for two hours the other day and it really taught me to blah, 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 blah. That's amazing. 
Um, I had a, uh, I met with a member of Congress once in particular who said, do you know so-and-so? And I said, yes, yeah, she's actually a friend of mine. And the congressperson said, um, I was at a party with her the other night and we had a really great conversation. And that, that matters a lot. And when you look at the Illinois delegation, I will note, and why so many of them are so good on our um, issues in Washington, mm -hmm. you'll see that they were state legislators and they were people who were educated before they came to Washington. You know, Congresswoman Bigger is a really good example. Mm -hmm. you know, or Congresswoman Halverson now, um, who has a district adjoining Congresswoman Biggers. Mm -hmm. She was in the state legislature forever. So she's already been educated by IGA. She's been educated by Equal uh, Equality Illinois. Mm -hmm. um, and she's, they've been educated by individual members of their constituency. And that helps so, so, so much. Other things you can do. When you have a story to tell, make sure you tell it. Uh, a lot of what we trade on in Washington is being able to tell stories of, of trans people or gay people or bi people around the country. And so make sure we get your stories. Um, that's that, those kind of things that are not specifically supporting NCTE mm -hmm. dramatically support our work. Um, and they're, they're just very, very important. You know, if you um, are a responsible blogger, you know, blog about what, what seems right to you and, and, and get the word out and get people excited. Uh, I mean, there's just so much to do. Now, with NCT in particular, um, you know, coming to our lobby day every spring um, is a really, really great thing. Um, as I said, at our lobby day this year, we know of at least one member of Congress who absolutely came on board. We know of two members of Congress who we weren't sure where, where they are. Mm -hmm. They came on board. Um, they might have been on board before, so I don't want to take too much credit for that. And by the way, I don't get any credit for any of it because <laughs> it was the people who actually came to the lobby day who met with them. I didn't meet with any of those members of Congress. It's not, it's not me, and that's good. Well, Mara, this has been a really informational interview. I know our viewers will get a lot out of this. Um, we really thank you for overviewing a lot of the really important political things going on now. Um, since we are at the Be All conference this week, um, and what does it mean to you to be at this conference, and what are some of your hopes for uh, the impact it will have both for you personally and for some of our attendees? Sure. Well, I, I have an embarrassing thing to admit, which is when I got booked to come to the Be All conference. I thought it was an Army recruitment uh, thing. So uh, it's a little embarrassing. No, seriously, this is my, I believe, my 10th Be All conference in a row. Um, I wouldn't miss it. I come every year. I'm very excited to come. Uh, I have so many friends here. Uh, for me, that's the most important thing. I mean, it is, it's very important that, that NCTE representatives get around the country and talk about what we're doing and get input from trans people about what we're doing. So that's, that's an important part for us. Um, but I, I love the camaraderie of it. I love the, the support that I get personally. And that honestly, I get to support other people. That feels so good. You know, I, I did a workshop on Thursday on how to come out to your family and friends. That's a little outside of my usual work. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing that workshop for, for about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. I update it all the time, so don't worry, it's not stale. But of all the work I do, it is the work I get the most thanks for. Mm -hmm. People will say to me, oh, that really, that really helped me. I'm trying to figure out how I'm coming out to my family now, and your workshop helped me. So I, I love being able to support individuals. Mm -hmm. I love at these conferences that everybody is really here to support each other. Now, it's a conference, so there's also a lot of fun, which, which most people like, not everybody. Um, but I, I just, I'm just a huge Be All fan. Well, we've been honored to have Mara Kiesling from the National Center for Transgender Equality with us here today. And in closing, Mara, could you share with our viewers the place they could go for more information and resources about the, the organization? Absolutely. Our website is www.transequality.org. And thank you, Mara Kiesling, for being with us today. Thanks so much for having me, Vanessa.